Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Stormworks. I'm currently on episode 13, and I'm designing this ship, which I've named Tiger Shark. It has a couple of systems already installed, but most of it still needs to be done, and that's mostly going to be the focus of this episode. Now, I have seen that the Tiger Shark has a tendency to dip below the water. Um, I haven't actually added the fuel yet, so that means that <coughs> currently the bow doesn't have enough buoyancy. So that means I'm going to have to adjust the bow a little bit. Uh, take off the speed sensor and I'll put that back on very soon. Just make sure that this thing has a little bit more buoyancy, so it has to be a little wider. Now, fortunately, I shouldn't have to remove the pipe. This is the uh, oxygen supply for the engine. I can just keep that in there. And the problem is probably going to be with either too many blocks or not enough bow. And potentially the fact that it tapers uh, to a smaller section too fast. Let's see, how do I elegantly make this thing work? Because I do like the way that the control is set up right now. I really don't want to have to redo all of that. If I don't have to. Let's see. If I add a couple of blocks like this. All of this has got to go. At the bottom here. Mm. Now it's going to have to be tricky. Because I really need to make sure that there's no single block missing here. One block missing means a complete lack of buoyancy, with the exception of the floats. Looks like I've got a few too many blocks here. Am I still using a double deck here? No, not anymore. I fixed that in the previous episode. Okay. So now she's a little wider. Um, let's see. This is going to be one of those corner blocks. Let's make it two ahead each time. And hopefully this should fix my whole buoyancy issue. So we're going to go right up. And same thing here. Same thing here. Replace this one. Now she has a hell of a bow like this. Now that's intentional because I want to install a water cannon in there. And I want to have enough room to make sure that there is potential for expansion of that section. Because I am expecting to be using improved pumps in the future. Um, one more here, one there. Now I can tie it off here. Okay, now is the job of making sure this stuff is waterproof, and I still haven't really found a fast way of doing that, other than just manually placing down every single block. Because you can draw larger areas, but it's going to continue outside the ship. So for the moment, this is what I have. Now the ship currently doesn't have a keel, but because of those floats on the sides, I think it doesn't really need one. Or at least, that's what I'm hoping. If that turns out to be wrong, then I can always add a keel later. If the ship, for some reason or another, starts to list too much. See, that's what I mean. If I draw it out, like I want to have a larger section of blocks placed, it continues outside the ship. And that's because I don't have a um, bow which just tapers directly, but which does it gradually, thanks to adding a couple of blocks in between every time. Okay, let's do another float test. <clears throat> I want to see if it works. Of course, it's still dark, which is not ideal to see how the boat's responding. Well, she's still a little heavy on the bow. Potentially even more so than previous. That's weird. I don't believe that there's water coming into the boat. <clears throat> but just to be sure, I'm going to make it a separate compartment. So I'm going to cut the front of the bow off, making sure that there's absolutely no water coming in. And of course, this whole area does not, or is not considered as a um, watertight area, thanks to not having doors. So this 
cockpit only adds weight and not buoyancy. So I can imagine that could cause all sorts of issues. Yeah, and this is what I was worried about. I have too many blocks in the floats. Because I added the top layer and then the layer which connects to the rest of the boat. <coughs> so the floats were a little too heavy. And instead of adding more buoyancy, they were dragging the boat down. Alright, once again. I really want to see how fast this thing can go. <coughs> Eventually, that is. Yep, now she's a little better. Now she's a little better. That compartment gave it a little bit more buoyancy, so there was probably some area that it just didn't quite consider to be closed off. The question is which part? Because I very much doubt it's this area. Although, just to be on the safe side, <coughs> let's replace this with a straight and closed pipe. Add one there. Okay, time to add some systems. Starting out with the fluid cannon. Since I now have both access to the fluid cannon and pumps, I can use the fluid cannon properly. Instead of just having to go with a couple of systems haphazardly tied together like I did on the helo. That's the fluid cannon. Now if you want to make sure that this thing spits out water far, you're going to have to add quite a few pumps. Fortunately, they're not expensive. They're just, I think, 50? No, they're 100 each. Still, that's not too much. I'm going to turn mirror mode off. This is going to be the point where I take on water. So it comes out from there and then gets pumped through a whole line of pumps. Connecting everything together. Uh, this one goes up and back into the other pumps. This one goes down, around, and back in. And of course, here we're going to need a fluid port because this is where the whole cannon system takes on water. Add a pipe to that. So now it goes from here through these two pumps, around to those two, back to those two. I think that should be enough. I don't think I'm going to need much more firepower than that. And hopefully I'll eventually unlock the additional, uh, more powerful pump soon. Because those things really make a difference in how much firepower you can put out with a fluid cannon. One over here, one there. Alright, there you go. Now, I took off my linear speed sensor and my KPH microcontroller. So we're going to put those things back on. Now it's time to start working on the cockpit and the controls. Um, it doesn't have hydrofoils, it just has two gearboxes, it doesn't have a reverse at the moment, and it doesn't have one of those small maneuvering props that I usually use. So I'm going to add a couple more systems. Um, I'm going to add a propeller or two. Just the small propellers. These are going to be the maneuverable props so that in ports or in closer confinements I'm going to use these. No gearbox, no nothing whatsoever, just there to quickly maneuver. Then I'm going to have to go with um, a couple of rudders question is, where do I place those down? I could put those here. Those parts. Turn off the mirror mode, otherwise they're going to act irrationally and uh, contradict each other. So there, now we have the rudders. Props are very, very close to that. Let's give them a little bit more room. First the electric motors. Actually, no, first the props. Props take up more uh, space than the electric motors do. Okay, so now I have maneuvers, I have my fluid jet, which is the main propulsion. Time to work on the controls. I'm going to go with a standard throttle. 
And that is going to be controlling the main engine. So this one goes to the engine block over here. I want to be able to control that quickly. So my button one is going to push that one. Button two is going to push the down throttle. For that, I'm going to have to switch these because they're currently set to toggle. I want that to be push. So this is a throttle up. And this is throttle down. All right, that's one. Next, I need to have control over those small props that I just installed. So back to logic. I want those to be W and S. So those are going to be controlling those two small motors. And then we have the rudders themselves, A and D. That's going to go to the fin rudders, but also to the fluid jet. Now you have a deflector A and a deflector B. And that is, and you can sort of make it out, um, that's these things on the side, or uh, on the, well, pretty much on the rear of the fluid jet. You send a signal to one or the other, it's going to um, use it as an additional control surface. So this one is going to go to A. But if I send a signal to both, it doesn't do much at all. So what I'm going to need to do is add a invert, an invert number, or no, yeah, numerical inverter, and send the inverted signal to the other one. So that if I press A, so I want to turn left, it's going to both uh, add this one and remove that one. So you just redirect the fluid or the uh, fluid nozzle. Okay, so that's those control surfaces set up. Now we still have the clutch, the gearboxes, the engine starter. Um, I have outputs for small generators. I have electricity that I still need to do and temperature uh, systems like that. Um, displays. I don't think I have the composite displays unlocked yet. Because they did have an update recently where you had a composite display, but I don't have those yet. Compass ball could come in handy as well. Although, to be fair, I barely use them. Um, digital display. No, I want a couple of dials. I want to see what my engine's doing. So these two are going to be indicators for the engine. This one goes to engine temperature. And this one... I'm actually going to do this properly for once. So this is rotations per second. I want it to go from rotations per second to rotations per minute. So I'm going to have to create a small microcontroller that has one logic node that it takes as an input number. So this is um, engine RPS. And the other one is going to be a number output, engine RPM. Drag those to a different position, can make the thing even smaller. And now we're going to go into the logic itself. So this is going to be the number that gets taken from the engine. Now I need a simple function, an fx. This one goes here, that one goes there. If I add it like this, then it doesn't do anything yet. So what I need to do is take the x input, which is the RPS, times 60, and then you have the RPMs. That's all that I need to do. Um, I don't need to update it, but I do need to save it. This is going to be the uh, RPS RPM. And I also need to adjust that in the design, or it's going to have the standard name controller, or the standard uh, microcontroller name. So RPS, RPM. Save that. Back to the editor. RPS... Where did it save it? Water warning light. Hold on, where did you go? There you go. I hadn't saved it yet, or at least not updated it yet. All right, so this takes the RPS. This takes the RPM, and the RPMs go over here. So this is RPM, this is engine temperature, usually doesn't go any higher than 100, uh, if it does then you're in deep trouble. 
Now my RPM is usually somewhere between 0 and 20. That's RPS. So this is going to be between 0 and 600. If the engine's putting out maximum RPMs, it's doing 600 rotations per minute. Next, we have fuel, but I don't know about my fuel yet. I know I have a decent fuel tank, but I don't know how much, which is a bit risky. The problem is I don't have a fluid meter. I have a fluid spawner, so I can tell the game what I want it to have spawned, but that doesn't work. Um, and at the moment, without a fluid meter, I have no idea how much fuel I have. And we're just going to have to hope that it doesn't run out of fuel. My guesstimation is that it can take quite a bit without running into trouble. Alright, time for a push button. The push button is going to be there to start the engine. So this is engine start. This one goes to the engine there. Next, toggle buttons. This is going to be gear 1, gear 2 and clutch. I just hope that I can actually see those from over here. So this is going to be clutch. This is going to be gear 1. And this is going to be gear 2. Clutch goes to the microcontroller. And the microcontroller goes to the actual clutch. If you want to get more info on the microcontroller, I have one video on that in my playlist. Next, the first gearbox. If it's toggled, I want this one to trigger. And if the other one gets pushed, I want that one to trigger. Now, these things, I'm going to go with a... Um, Let's say 1 to 2 from maximum 1 to 3, 1 to 2, 2 to 5. I think that should do it, but it's going to have to take a little bit of experimentation. Now there is one more dial that I need, and that's to see how my battery is doing. So this one's going to take information from the battery, which is over here. The battery. Now you might notice that I do not actually have a reverse gear on this boat, and that's because I don't have to. That's what I have those small props for. Um, it's not designed to go in rever reverse very fast. It's designed to go forward quickly. And if I'm maneuvering in small areas, I can use the props and reverse. So I don't actually need a reverse gear on this one. Next, I want to display. I want to see how fast I'm going. This one is going to take its information from the microcontroller that outputs the KPH. So this is uh, a speed in KPH. I don't need any decimals and I want this one to be horizontal. Now that's a good start. Um, I have my clutch set up, I have my engine gearing, let's see which are not connected yet. At the moment almost everything. With the exception of the winches, of course. I'm just going for the engine control at the moment. Yep, everything on the engine is controlled. There is, however, one more, and that's the fluid pump. I generally do put that on a button to make sure that I can turn it on and off if I need to. Because if you keep that thing running the whole time when you're not on board, it can drain your engine. Or, sorry, it can drain your battery. So this one is the fluid pump. Or actually the uh, fuel pump. All right, now we still need a few controls for the actual fluid cannon on the bow. I'm going to keep those uh, over here. For that, I'm going to build a small surface. I need one button that says turn it on. That's, yeah, it's going to go over here. And then two throttle controls. One like that and the other one like this. This one is going to control the swivel. This one's going to control the elevation. And this one turns all those pumps on or off collectively. There you go. So this is the fluid cannon toggle. This is a fluid cannon swivel. Fluid cannon elevation. And important with these things is that you sometimes have to set up the maximum value and the minimum value, as well as the sensitivity. 
If you turn the sensitivity up too high and you press it once, it's going to completely swivel out of control. In this case, I need to have a minimum value of minus one, a maximum of one, so it can swivel um, all the way from the left to all the way from to the right. That's what I needed to do. I don't need to do the same thing for elevation because I don't need to be spraying down on the top of the boat itself. All right, next, I have my winch system in the back. Now in the winch, I want a couple of controls. I want it to be um, being able to toggle out, so lower the winch, retrieve the winch, and then I want to be able to both disconnect or connect it from over here, so from when I'm in the water, and in my cockpit. The reason for that is sometimes you have to tow stuff. And um, actually, if I'm doing it for one thing, I might as well do it for everything. I want to be able to control the winch from both in my cockpit and in the water. For that, I'm going to need X or blocks. So if something is being toggled, then um, I want it to be able to do that from both inside the boat and in the water. That's going to make it a little bit more complex, at least wire-like. So this one is going to toggle the, um, let's say the A, and not that one. This one is going to also toggle the A, and not that one. The XOR is going to go to both the connector, the winch in, winch out. So this one goes to A. As that leaves me with all the B inputs for the XORs. Those are going to be up front in the control system. I still have some buttons over here. So that's three toggles. The reason behind this is that sometimes you have a tow mission and you just want to be able to get your um, cargo dropped and bring your winch back in. So this is uh, the winch out, winch in, and finally, the connector. This one, winch out. Uh, that one goes there, so that's cabled down. And that goes to the B input. And this one goes to the winch in, and the last one goes to the middle, and allows me to disconnect the connector from all the way over here. All right, I think that pretty much does everything that I needed to do. But we still need to connect all the um, energy systems. The way I usually do it is I make these smaller subsystems. There's no real reason for that, other than that I don't like um, a battery connection going to every single item. Because it just completely clutters up your electricity management view, which is what I'm in now. So I usually just go for these, um, connect everything to everything. But in straight lines, instead of, for example, doing uh, this, where you just connect it to everything. And then you get those sort of almost butterfly views and just utter mess. I don't want that. To that pump, uh, we're going to go to these pumps over here. There is one downside to this, which is that if for some reason you remodel your unit, you remodel your ship, and you take off one control, or you take off one subsystem, the whole chain that follows it can be without power. So that's a definite disadvantage. And you need to keep an eye on that. At the moment, I believe I have everything connected. This all goes here, this one goes to the engine. Yep. All right, next up, a couple of lights. Um, I'm going to go with one up here in the middle. Turn the symmetry view back on. One on each side over there. We can have some in the floats pointing forward. Of course, we do need a couple of lights inside the actual cockpit. Otherwise, if we're operating in the dark, it's going to be really, really dark. And you can sometimes barely make out your... Oh, you can sometimes barely make out your own ship. This is why I was flooding. 
this lonely block over here. I wouldn't be surprised if the ship is actually more out of the water now. Okay, I also want a couple of lights on the stern. Lights. I can have one over here. And it's time for a spotlight as well. I don't really have any robotic... No. I cannot really swing the spotlight around. Other than uh, putting it on a small-ish... Well, I usually just call them walls up here. So I wouldn't be able to switch to um, swivel it upside or uh, up and down. So this is how it's going to have to be. There. For that, of course, I will need controls. I need control for uh, the lights in general. Actually, let's put that somewhere else, somewhere off to the side, where I don't accidentally trip it. This is going to be the lights. And then that's going to be the spotlight. And we need a throttle to swivel the spotlight left to right. Of course, hook these things up to power. This one goes up here. And the toggle button goes to the light. Then we have the one for all the lights. That's usually a bit more <laughs> wiring than I like. Because it goes to every light that I just added. And that can get quite cluttered, unfortunately. Um, there's the light, that one. I believe that that's all of them. But I do need to send power to the lights and to the light switch. goes here and there. We're also going to have to provide power to the actual searchlight. I can tie these things together and also send them to the searchlight. This one can go down there. So does that one and that one and that one. I believe that's all of them. Both interior and exterior lights should now be working. But there is one more thing I need to connect the lights to, or at least that light switch. And that is all my instruments. Otherwise the instruments are going to be in the dark. That's the backlight. Uh, backlight. I don't really have backlights here. I think that should just about do it. Alright, let's save it. Now, time to paint the thing. Uh, replace all the blocks, replace the color. Mm, that's not really what I'm going for, it's just checking if that works. Uh, what am I going to paint this thing? Sort of metallic color with a couple of accents. That's what I want to go. That's what I want to go for. Mm. These things could work out nicely. Yep, switch mirror mode back on before I forget. And I want to do that for the next layer as well. Oh crap, I forgot one. That's not supposed to be there. And then over here a orange lining so I can always find the water level, or at least what's supposed to be the water level line. I think that just about covers it, just need to do the stern. Okay, 
I think we're in business. Let's save it. Oh, damn, there's one more thing I forgot. Um, the ship itself would be ready to maneuver if I would have a way to put fuel in the tanks. And at the moment, I don't. So I need to have a couple of fuel connectors over here. Both ends. And they are going to be below water level. So this is going to be the standard color of the boat. Fluid connector. And a fluid port. One on that side, one on that side. I can also loop one all the way to the back of the boat. And that might be advisable just for easy access. So I would want one, say, over here. It's going to be a fluid connector. And I need to loop that thing all the way over here. Because this one goes to the fuel. Um, I can interrupt that one. I know that I usually paint these pipes black, but in this color I find them easier to find. Just so I know where to go with them. Pipe over here. And one over there. Okay, now I have my fluid connectors as well. Just leaves me with one more push button that I want. So that I can disconnect all the fluid connectors that I currently have enabled. Or in general. So if I push this, it sends a connector release system or a signal. And of course, you need to connect that button. So this is the release connectors uh, or release fuel connectors to be accurate. Now, as for painting my controls, I usually go with red for engines. Uh, this one was fuel pumps. So this one also deserves to be red. This one goes for fuel, so that's usually black. Speed is all right. Searchlight's usually not a separate color, but my, um, what's it called? My fluid cannon controls are. Just thinking of there's a more elegant way of controlling these things because they're, they're a bit cluttered. And a toggle. So you know they take up a little bit less space. They might also be slightly harder to control. Come on. Uh, this one was the elevation. This one's the swivel. And this one was going to the pumps. Uh, fluid cannon elevation, fluid cannon swivel, minus one, sensitivity 50%, this one too, sensitivity 50%, and this one, if I can select it, fluid cannon toggle. Last check, everything gets power. I believe it does. Well, with the exception of the fluid uh, things, but I don't really know if they actually need a connection, power-wise. All right, let's see if it floats. I really hope that it does. It does indeed. And I'm going to despawn it and bring it closer to this fuel tank, because that would make refueling operations quite a bit easier. So this one, move back. And if you want to, you can even turn on the world view so you can see where exactly it's going to be. This is where I am. This is where the fuel tank is. I'm going to move it a bit forward, a bit off to the side and closer into the water. You can see where the water starts because it sort of interacts with the hull. So right now it shouldn't drop in. It just spawns in gently. And there's my fluid connector. All right, spawn it in. <clears throat> Time to fuel it up and take it out for a spin. I have a massive fuel tank ready to go. Hose out. Oh, that's one thing that I still need to adjust. The winch speed. Hold on. 
It won't let me despawn it. There. Sometimes the game will be a little bit weird about that. Where it sometimes says, hey, you're outside the system, you're outside the uh, designated box, and sometimes it says, no, you're fine, you're inside. It's a little odd that way. Now, if only these winches were faster, that'd be lovely. Because this just generally takes me way too much time. Uh, pump to hose. Oh. That's probably not enough length, though, yet. Let's see, there it is. Let's just drop it. Because I was towing it behind me, I want to grab it. And try not to drown, ideally. There we go. Connect it. Connected. Again, I have no idea how much fuel I can take on. So, I'm not going to pump in too much. Actually, I can figure out how much you can pump in. Because if the tank is full, then this thing is just going to stop sending fuel. Hold on. It gave it, what, 20 liters? That can't be right. Why is that? <clears throat> um, ah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm trying to pump it through a pump, which is going in the other direction. That won't work. That won't work. So I just need to adjust that a little bit. And close straight pipe and a fluid port. Now I can fill it up. Pump to hose. Where is the hose? There's the hose. Bring it back up. <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Connected. Okay, let's see if it works. Because now it should. Yep. Okay, so so far I was... Uh, I started at 13,495. I think a thousand liters of fuel should get us going. That should be enough. Time to get on board. And actually take this thing out for a go. Alright, I would like my lights. All lights seem to be operational. Now, use the electric system to get going. There we go. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle. Start the engine. Oh, sorry, start the fuel pump, then start the engine. RPMs are good. Now I can turn on the clutch. And we are underway. Albeit very slowly. That might have to do with asking too much of the engine too fast. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think the two gearboxes are too hard on the engine. Alright, that is bad news for me, because that means I'm going to have to pump out the fuel again. <coughs> and adjust the gearboxes, because if I despawn it right now, it's going to cost me a thousand liters of fuel. Which is basically a thousand dollars. I still have 21,000 left, but let's not do it. Okay. So, I'm going to have to find this thing again. Up. There. Connected. And we're going to pump to the tank. This generally takes a couple seconds, depending on how much fuel capacity I have. Still need to save 400 liters. 
and still thinks I'm outside the spawn zone. So the only way to despawn it is actually get on top of the boat and manually despawn it. Okay. So the gearboxes seem to be a bit hard on the engine and immediately kill it. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. So let's give it a little bit less strain early on. Try again. Pump to hose. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Swim, swim, swim. Don't die. There we go. Again, sort of top it off with maybe 500 to 1,000 liters. That's about 500. Good enough. Try again. Lights on. Fluid pump on. Bit of throttle. Engine start. RPM's looking good. It's apparently a whole lot more than what I was expecting because it goes all the way up to 1200. Clutch. And now we are getting underway. This half throttle. This is full throttle. Full throttle is 21 kph. And we're going to add the gearbox. I'm going to need a lot more engines on this one to make it go fast. Or a different engine at that. RPM is okay. 222. Yeah, if I add the other gearbox, the engine just immediately dies. Okay. So I just need a lot more engines. But look how fast this thing can turn. It can turn on a dime. Thanks to the fluid jet like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do... In the next episode, that is, is add one, potentially two more engines and add more speed to it. Because at the moment it's just not fast enough. Ideally, I would have the aircraft engine, but I don't have that unlocked yet. So for the moment, I'm going to have to go with the basic engines. Which is less than ideal, but it's what I have to work with. So I'm going to end it here, I'll pump out the fuel, and eventually we'll get this thing to go, and we'll get it to go fast. Thank you for watching so far, hope you're enjoying this design process, and I'll see you soon for more episodes.